Uh, so I'm happy to introduce Nam Gyu Kang, Nam Gyu Kang from uh, the Korea Institute for Advanced uh, Studies, and he will talk about conformal field theory on uh, the Riemann sphere uh, and its boundary version for uh, SLE. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, uh, uh, in the uh, semi-expository paper with uh, Nikolai Makarov at Caltech, uh, Gaussian free field and conformal field theory, when we present the uh, uh, link between component field theory and uh, CODA uh, standard SLE CAFA. And then uh, in the next paper with uh, Nick, uh, calculus of component fields on a com compact Riemann surface, we presented uh, analytical implementation of component field theory on a compact Riemann surface. I mean, uh, in both papers, we treat a uh, stress tensor or a uh, Vera sort of field in terms of uh, re derivatives. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about a version of component field theory on the Riemann uh, sphere and its boundary version for forward, backward, quarter, radial, SLE, kappa rho from Gaussian free field and its background charge modification. And this approach can be extended to uh, several conformal settings, for example, Analysis SLE with Dirichlet uh, boundary conditions or excursion reflected boundary conditions. Uh, that uh, preprint was posted at the archive but, uh, many years ago. And then uh, we uh, uh, last year, we uh, revised uh, the paper uh, significantly. And then in that paper, we used the uh, aguchi ogri version of uh, Wardus equation. And also this approach uh, can be extended to uh, various versions, uh, uh, various patterns of insertion, for example, uh, N-leg operators. Today I'm going to talk about only N-leg operators with only one leg, N equals one, but uh, also screening for multiple SLEs. And uh, this paper will appear soon. And uh, this is a joint work with Tom Arbus and uh, Nick, Nick Makarov. And also uh, 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 the previous paper has a, a classical limit. And in the uh, uh, paper, in the preprint, pole dynamics and integral motion for multiple SLE zeros, uh, uh, we studied this classical limit. And then uh, uh, recently we revised that paper uh, significantly and we posted just uh, last week and then uh, it was announced uh, uh, yesterday. And uh, now uh, this page has, uh, this paper has 60 pages long. And so uh, here you have several pictures of SLE zeros with uh, uh, two marked point and four marked point on the, on the, on the top and the, uh, on the bottom, we have six marked points where uh, 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 multiple SLE zero, uh, 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 zeros grow. And then uh, uh, we observed that uh, these multiple SLE zeros are, are real locus of SLE, uh, real locus of conformational functions. Also, you can see some uh, the, the SLE zeros can be viewed as uh, viewed, viewed as uh, flow lines of some uh, rational vector fields. And actually, uh, 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 Petola and Wang uh, first observed that multiple SLE zero zeros are uh, zero, uh, uh, real locus of real relational functions. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about, I mean, I'm going to uh, intro introduce uh, mathematical point of view of uh, mathematical approach to this conformal uh, view theory in a very gentle way. Okay, so the basic field in my, uh, our theory is uh, uh, Gauss, uh, the basic ingredient is a uh, Gaussian free field. So as you uh, know, uh, uh, Gaussian free field is a random distribution. And in this picture, I use uh, eigenvalues of Ginebra ensembles and independent copies for the singularity of, singularities of this uh, discrete Gaussian free field. And then uh, so that's the graph of uh, discrete Gaussian free field. Then uh, uh, this uh, covariance of uh, Gaussian free field tested by this uh, function f and g as this integral representation. And this uh, integral kernel is the uh, two point correlation function of Gaussian free field, which is a Green's function in a simply going to domain. The standard notation is this uh, bracket, but uh, uh, throughout this uh, my talk, I'm going to use this expectation notation. So, uh, so this is formal expectation, but it is very convenient to use. 
So you can think of that Coulson function as the expectation of Gaussian free field with uh, uh, test functions, which are just Dirac their test at Z and W. Okay, and so uh, uh, on the right hand side, this is the discrete Gaussian free field, or, or Gaussian free field, and then uh, uh, I'm going to add this uh, non random uh, height function. So this height function has uh, uh, jump discontinuity at, at uh, a two mark boundary point, P and Q, for example. So uh, that's the starting point of my SLEs, and uh, that's the ending point of my SLEs. So if uh, this height function, and then if you add this, then uh, as you know, the uh, contour lines of this uh, discrete Gaussian free field and this uh, harmonic function as uh, conformal functions angles and uh, uh, SLE uh, uh, kappa with kappa equals four with a specific height lambda, which is one in this case. And uh, in the, uh, from the conformal field theoretic view, uh, this height function can be obtained by the insertion of the following uh, weak exponential of uh, chiral part of Gaussian free field. So that's uh, somehow a uh, holomorphic part of Gaussian free field. And I'm going to explain what it is uh, during my talk. So that's the very uh, important observation. And I'm going to explain how you get uh, these height functions from the insertion of uh, this weak exponential of Gaussian, uh, uh, holomorphic part of Gaussian free field. And this A is a uh, uh, charge at, uh, a, uh, we have a charge at, a uh, charge A at uh, point P and charge minus A at uh, point Q here. Okay, so uh, in this slide, uh, uh, you uh, see the level lines of Gaussian free field plus this height function. And uh, uh, the Schramm and Sheffield uh, uh, proved that this uh, uh, zero state is uh, nothing but SLE4. And you can see uh, the uh, uh, interface curve from my mark point from P to Q uh, in this uh, slide. Okay, so uh, uh, so in this slide, I just summarized uh, what we uh, showed in the first paper, uh, which appeared in asterisk. So I have two parameters, A and B, which are related to SLE uh, parameter kappa in the following way. A is square root of two over kappa, and B is A times kappa four minus one. And then uh, I'm going to consider the following uh, modified Gaussian free field. So the random part is just nothing but the Gaussian free field. And then I'm going to add this uh, 2B minus argument of W prime, where W is a conformal map from uh, this simply connect domain with two mark boundary point P and Q onto the upper upper plane. And so I'm going to send P to zero and Q to infinity. So the, the, the reason that I added this, this part is, uh, is, uh, is very clear. So if you uh, exponent, exponentiate this modified Gaussian free field, free field then, uh, then uh, it will become uh, exponentiate one, it will become a uh, differential. To get more differentials, we add uh, uh, this uh, argument of W prime to the Gaussian free field and then uh, this modification will give you uh, more conformal field theory with various uh, uh, central charges. And then uh, we also add these height functions to A times argument of W. Then uh, we got the, the following field Markov property. So as you know, SLE has domain Markov property and uh, in, the, uh, uh, in our theory, correlation functions will be uh, Martin Gero observables for uh, SLE kappa. So you can, uh, 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 we can interpret that uh, uh, theorem in the following way. So we have a correlation function of uh, several fields, which are of a family of uh, this modified Gaussian free field. So we have several, uh, several fields and then take the correlation given uh, the, the previous history of uh, uh, our SLE past 
up to time t, then uh, that's the correlation of fields on a new domain, which is the uh, SLA domain, uh, d sub t on, uh, up to time t. So then uh, this correlation functions on that domain uh, is a process and uh, it, uh, it is uh, uh, Martingale observables for uh, SLA kappa. Then uh, during my talk, I'm going to uh, prove, uh, I mean, I'm going to uh, state the uh, uh, exact uh, theorem, uh, the theorem in the exact form. I mean, so uh, we extend that uh, theorem to the uh, caudal radial SL kappa rules. Okay, so uh, you know the uh, uh, definition of caudal uh, SL is, so driving function is just a Brownian motion with speed kappa. Then actually Shuram and Sheffield introduced Harmony Explorer as a toy model for uh, contour lines or uh, zero sets of uh, um, Gaussian free field. So, uh, so in this picture, uh, this, uh, uh, let me show this uh, slide again. So, so we have a, a hexagonal lattice here. And then uh, on the boundary, we have this uh, blue uh, uh, hexagons and here we have white hexagons. And uh, now, uh, so uh, now next time, uh, this one will be colored blue or white, uh, depending on uh, my uh, lambda mock on the uh, uh, dual lattice, hit the boundary, uh, blue one or white one. So then uh, Sherman and Sheffield uh, uh, proved that this harmonic explorer uh, converges to SLE4 as the mesh size tends to go, as mesh size tends to zero. Then uh, what's the Martingale observable here? As you know, that's the uh, uh, argument of uh, Z and Z is on the epoch plane, but uh, this harmonic measure, as you know, gives the probability that a 2D Brownian motion at Z first exit the upper epoch plane through the uh, uh, negative real axis. Then uh, uh, this quantity, argument of uh, SLE minus driving function, uh, represents the probability that condition on SLE4 pass uh, up to time t. Then uh, that's the uh, uh, conditional probability that the point z will uh, lie to the left of the pass from uh, gamma, pass gamma from zero to infinity. So then uh, if you uh, take the E2 derivative, then uh, this drift term vanishes when kappa is equal to four. And uh, it is well known that a discrete version of this property holds for the harmonic explorer. And on the quite general condition, just one Martingale observable determines the law uniquely. And this is the main method due to uh, Lola, Schramm and uh, Berner of proving the scaling limit of convergence of interface curves in uh, lattice, mo uh, lattice models. And in almost all known cases, there is a discrete Martingale observable. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the uh, today's uh, um, uh, keyword. So, uh, conform field theory is a, a, pro a provider for uh, SLE Martingale observables. Okay, so then uh, uh, in the next part, I'm going to build a uh, conformal field theory in the uh, this uh, you know simply correct domain from the conformal field theory on a compact Riemann surface. Uh, I mean uh, on a compact uh, uh, on a uh, Riemann sphere, but uh, I'm going to explain the Gaussian free field on a uh, compact Riemann surface with uh, general genus G. So. Uh, uh, we introduce uh, the Gaussian free field on the uh, compact Riemann surface as a bivariant focus space functionals of two point, and that's the generalized uh, element, elements of focus space. Uh, you can view as this uh, Gaussian free field applied to test function, which is a difference of Dirac, this uh, Dirac masses at Z and Z0. So unlike the uh, Gaussian free field in a simply point domain, uh, this Gaussian free field should be uh, bivariant. So uh, at least we need two points. So I, I'm going to explain why we need this uh, uh, neutrality condition, so-called zero, zero neutrality conditions. So then uh, the correlation 
function of this uh, Gaussian free field on a compact Riemann surface. So then we, have, for example, the basic one is just that we need four points. Then uh, uh, this correlation function is this uh, uh, bipolar Green's functions with base of uh, uh, P and Q from uh, uh, the nodes of this uh, Gaussian free field. And then evaluated uh, uh, these two points from uh, the other Gaussian free field, node, the other nodes of this Gaussian free field, and then take the difference. Then, but on the Riemann sphere, it is nothing but the logarithm of uh, uh, cross ratio squared. So we have four points, and then uh, that's the cross ratio. So from this conformal field theory, I'm going to build a conformal field theory in a simply connected domain. But then the fields we are going to consider uh, are so-called focus based field, which are obtained from the Gaussian free field of psi by apply, applying the uh, following basic operations. Uh, we, we can take the derivatives within correlations, then we take the weak products and then uh, multiply by scalar functions and taking linear combinations. So current field is a uh, derivative of Gaussian free field. And uh, we use this uh, C dot notation for the weak, no, uh, weak, exponent, weak products. And uh, uh, the other notation is just a uh, colon on the product of these two fields. Then we can take the uh, weak product of current and Gaussian free field and uh, weak square the uh, current, and that's the weak square, uh, weak exponential of uh, Gaussian free field. Then how can you compute their correlation functions? For example, two point function of current field, uh, because they are derivative of Gaussian free field, but uh, for the Gaussian free field on a compact Riemann uh, uh, surface, uh, we need two nodes. And, but uh, if you take the derivative with respect to this variable and this variable, then it does not depend on this, uh, the other uh, nodes, for example, zero and G0, zero, zero, zero and G0. So then uh, we can have explicit formula for this uh, correlation function of uh, Collins field. And then weak product of this Collins field is just product of these two uh, current field minus this, uh, their, their correlation function. So that's the basic uh, uh, building uh, stuffs in my conformal field theory. Then uh, from uh, basic fields in, on, uh, on the Riemann sphere, I'm going to uh, uh, introduce Gaussian free field in a simply connected domain with Dirichlet boundary conditions or Neumann boundary conditions in the following way. So for the Dirichlet boundary condition, uh, so this psi, so uh, throughout my talk, I'm going to use, use the psi for the Gaussian free field on the Riemann sphere and uh, phi for the Gaussian free field in a simply connected domain and n for the Gaussian free field with a uh, uh, Neumann boundary condition. So that's the, that, has, that field has Dirichlet boundary condition. For the Dirichlet boundary condition, I subtract uh, Gaussian free psi, Gaussian free field on the Riemann sphere. And then the node here is just the same as this one. And then uh, that's the, uh, reflection of Z uh, uh, with respect to the boundary of this Dirichlet uh, boundary of, uh, with respect to the boundary of this simply quality domain D. So uh, uh, this Gaussian free field with Dirichlet boundary condition uh, has just one node. So this is a well-defined focus space field. However, uh, for the Neumann boundary condition, I take the uh, summation of these two guys. And then uh, 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 that is a formal field. For the, uh, to be accurate, we need to consider uh, uh, neutrality condition. For example, NZ minus NZ zero is a well-defined focus space field. So for example, why you may ask why we take the uh, minus sign here and then uh, for the Neumann Gaussian field, why we uh, take the plus sign here. But uh, if you think about the boundary conditions, if G is on the boundary, then uh, this reflection point is the same as Z. So uh, uh, on the boundary, this field vanishes. So that's the uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. And then uh, you, you can uh, easily check that this, uh, uh, this field capital N as uh, if you take the uh, uh, derivative uh, on the, uh, 
imaginary axis, direction of imaginary axis, then uh, on the upper upper plane, uh, this field has uh, uh, zero derivatives with respect to the uh, uniloma vector to the boundary. So in the upper upper plane, uh, the two point function of uh, Gaussian free field is just this Green's function with Dirichlet uh, boundary condition. For the formal uh, correlation function of this uh, uh, Gaussian free field is normal, a uh, Neumann boundary condition is uh, just twice of this uh, Green's function with uh, Neumann boundary condition. Okay, so uh, as you mentioned before, the height function can be obtained from the insertion of weak exponential of uh, chiral part or holomorphic part of Ga Gaussian free field. So uh, in this slide, I'm going to uh, define what the chiral part of uh, Gaussian free field means. So Gaussian free field is decomposed into chiral bosonic holomorphic fields and uh, its anti holomorphic part. Psi plus and psi minus. Psi minus is nothing but the conjugate of plus, uh, pi plus. And pi plus is the uh, uh, multi valued uh, holomorphic field uh, from uh, Z0 to Z. And uh, that's the collection of the following object. So that's the uh, collection of line integral along the path gamma from Z0 to uh, Z0 to Z. Uh, of uh, this current field uh, with respect to this zeta. So on the Riemann sphere, the correlation function of uh, this uh, psi plus is logarithmic of uh, this uh, cross ratio. Of course, uh, it depends on the, uh, the path gamma from uh, P to Q and gamma tilde from P tilde, Q tilde. So that's, that's why it is a multivalued field. And sometimes it is very convenient to introduce formal one point field, psi plus and psi minus with the following uh, formal correlations. The correlation of uh, pi plus of one node and pi plus of uh, one node Z zero is just log of one over Z minus Z zero. And in some sense this uh, holomorphic part and uh, this anti holomorphic Holomorphic part uh, are independent, which means the correlation function is zero. So then uh, this Gaussian free field is pi plus plus pi minus, and the pi plus of z z zero is the difference of this pi plus at z and z zero. So that's the uh, uh, formal fields and formal uh, uh, correlations. The next, I'm going to explain uh, OP uh, products. Were, uh, OP uh, multiplications between two fields. The reason that I'm going to explain, I, I, I introduced this OP family is the following. So uh, we have X uh, Wix uh, product and Wix uh, multiplication, but however, those, uh, I mean, Wix products are not uh, uh, preserved uh, if you consider BPG equations or uh, word equations. However, BPG equations hold for the uh, OP family of Gaussian free field. Then uh, uh, we, we are going to define the one leg operator, the insertion field to get uh, height function or boundary condition change operator in terms of OP exponentials. Okay, so suppose we have two holomorphic fields X and Y, then uh, the following uh, low long series expansions uh, is uh, are meaningful within, within correlation functions. So within correlation functions, we uh, expand that in the following way. And then, there, then we uh, usually uh, it has uh, uh, some singular parts because Gaussian free field has uh, correlation function, which are Green's function. And if you differentiate, then you get uh, some um, error free functions, for example. So the first uh, uh, random term is called uh, the OP product of these two fields in G and uh, X and Y. So uh, I'm going to pre present the following two, uh, following three imp important examples. So J is the current field, which is nothing but the derivative of Gaussian free field. Then uh, that's the uh, nothing but the 
collation of uh, Jn uh, itself and uh, weak product of Jn uh, J. Then this correlation function is uh, is minus W prime of J times W prime of Z over uh, uh, their uh, W J and difference of this one squared. And W is the uh, map from uh, uh, compact Riemann surface with genus uh, uh, with with a compact Riemann surface. For example, uh, uh, if Zenos zero case, it is a compact Riemann surface with Zenos uh, zero to uh, Riemann sphere. And for example, if in the uh, simply conic domain, W is a map from uh, simply conic domain to, for example, upper upper plane. Then uh, it has a, a singularity at zeta equals to z, and uh, it has a, a, a double pole at, at zeta equals to z. And then there is no uh, order one term here. Uh, but uh, the the first regular term is uh, Schwarzschild derivative of z, uh, Schwarzschild derivative of w at z, and plus a uh, weak square of current field j. So that that part is the uh, op square of this current field. So op square of current field is uh, weak square of current field plus this Schwarzschild derivative. So uh, weak square is itself is a quadratic differential with respect to z, but however, op square is quadratic differential with cocycle term and cocycle term is Schwarzschild derivative. And uh, in the similar computations, you can get uh, op square of Gaussian free field is weak square of Gaussian free field plus uh, logarithm of uh, conformal radius. And for example, if you take the uh, OP exponential of Gaussian free field, then you get this weak exponential of Gaussian free field times uh, conformal radius to the uh, this coefficient square. And uh, I times uh, uh, this alpha is sometimes called a charge at, at the node of this Gaussian free field. Okay, then uh, uh, we are going to extend this uh, OP exponentials into, into the uh, chiral cases, but we just take the, uh, 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 the definition in the following way. So for a divisor, so uh, that's the nothing but the uh, summation of Dirac, Dirac masses at the point Zj, and then coefficients are called the charge at uh, Zj. Then uh, with the, the uh, neutral condition, tau j equals to zero. So for example, for the uh, compact Riemann uh, sphere, the Gaussian free field itself is defined for the uh, divisor with uh, this uh, uh, neutral condition. But the uh, same thing, uh, same neutral condition can be applied to the uh, holomorphic part of Gaussian free field too. Then uh, we uh, uh, define the OP exponentials of this chiral part of Gaussian free field in the following way. So uh, it has so this is uh, OP exponential. So the random part is this weak exponential, and then we uh, somehow renormalize this weak expo exponent part uh, by uh, multiplying this uh, Coulomb correlation function. So, uh, but uh, if you are familiar with uh, SLE partition functions, then uh, it is nothing but the uh, SLE partition function for uh, K five equals four case. So pi plus of this uh, divisor is this linear summation of uh, pi plus at this uh, node at z zero, and then uh, coefficients is uh, uh, the coefficients of this Dirac masses. Then Coulomb's correlation function is just uh, the following rational functions in the identity chart of uh, 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 Riemann sphere, and also uh, they are uh, lambda j differentials at each point z z. So then, as I mentioned before, this Coulomb's correlation function is the partition function for codal SLE for a law. And then in the later uh, slide, I'm going to explain this uh, Coulomb's correlation functions uh, into the uh, kappa, uh, which is uh, uh, for the general value of kappa. Okay, how can we uh, uh, extend this? 
uh, we simply uh, add uh, the following uh, PPS form uh, to the Gaussian free field. Uh, this PPS form is pre pre expression form. So uh, for the uh, random field, which is nothing but a collection of uh, uh, no, uh, non non random field size, nothing but a collection of uh, deterministic uh, functions in each uh, 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 chart on a uh, Riemann sphere. Now, when you read this psi in a chart pi or a chart pi tilde, then uh, they have the, uh, if they have the following transformation law, then we call this psi a, a PPS form of IB. So uh, this cycle term is a log of this transition map prime with this coefficients IB. Then uh, throughout my talk, uh, I will mostly concern with, uh, concern with holomorphic PPS form with uh, logarithmic singularities, such that if you take the uh, Laplacian of this psi, it's a, a finite linear combination of Dirac delta uh, measures, then we will call uh, such forms simple. So suppose we have psi, a simple PPS IB form psi, then uh, uh, we denote beta to be the Laplacian of this psi. Then uh, for the simple PPS form, this beta is the uh, linear combination of Dirac masses. Then we call uh, that is the background charge of this uh, simple PPS IB form. And then uh, we define we modified this uh, chiral part of Gaussian free field on a uh, Riemann sphere in the following way. So uh, here is the uh, uh, floppy part of Gaussian free field, and then we add the, the following non-random PPS uh, IB form, and uh, it, it is IB log of W prime, and W is a, a, a compact Riemann surface with zeros zero to a, a Riemann sphere, and then summation of beta k of log W minus W q k. So uh, we have a background charge, be, uh, beta k at qk, and then uh, that's the uh, mod modification of uh, my uh, psi prime. Then uh, uh, we have the following neutrality condition, which is uh, total sum of background charges uh, b times Euler characteristic, and uh, this observation comes from uh, Gauss Bonnet theorem. So uh, suppose we have this uh, um, curvature kappa here and rho is the conformal metric. Then if you integrate this out, then you have two pi times Euler characteristic and uh, this uh, curvature kappa can be written in terms of this uh, conformal metric in the following way. So Laplacian of log of uh, conformal metric over this uh, rho. So then kappa rho is just nothing but the, this uh, numerator. So then uh, this gauss bonnet theorem can be extended to a uh, simple PPS, for example, uh, order one. Then uh, uh, instead of this uh, uh, logarithm of conformal metric, we can replace this, uh, this particular simple PPS uh, one form by any uh, simple PPS one form. Then uh, from this observation, uh, we have the following neutrality condition for the background charges. The total sum of background charges is, for example, 2B uh, on a uh, Riemann sphere. Then uh, uh, we uh, uh, modified our OP exponentials for a general background charge in the following way. So OP exponentials is uh, random part, which is the weak exponential of uh, pi plus as before, but for the uh, uh, deterministic part is the ratio of uh, Coulomb correlation functions or partition functions of uh, SLEs. And here, Coulomb correlation functions has the same uh, uh, rational functions in the identity chart, but uh, the, the uh, dimension of uh, differentials uh, has been changed. And in the B equals zero case, we have just one half times uh, charge squared, but uh, this uh, uh, for the modified one, we have minus B times sigma J. 
Then uh, the correlation of these OP exponentials is nothing but the cross ratio, uh, the, the ratio of these uh, partition functions. And then uh, you can uh, see uh, in this computation that there is no interactions between uh, background charges in uh, these correlations. So uh, this Coulomb gas correlation functions uh, is uh, uh, just partition function for Codal SLE kappa rho with a general value of kappa. And uh, the, um, these uh, charges are related to uh, SLE parameters in the following way. So we put the uh, charge A, which is square root of two over kappa uh, at uh, the starting point of SLEP. And then uh, we put the uh, um, uh, other uh, background charge beta at uh, QK, which are uh, first point of uh, first points of this uh, SLE kappa rho. And then uh, at the uh, targeting point Q, we have 2b minus a minus uh, summation of beta k so that the total charge of this uh, background charge is just uh, uh, 2b. And a is a square root of kappa and b is a times kappa four minus one. And this uh, rho sub k in the definition of SL kappa rho is related to this uh, background charge beta k by this uh, uh, scaling factor square root of two kappa. So uh, let me just uh, briefly uh, summarize what we have in the uh, very standard cases. So for uh, symmetric double divisors, beta plus and beta minus, with the neutral conditions, uh, if you uh, add uh, summation of all charges, then uh, uh, that should be uh, two times B. And then uh, we modified Ga uh, Gaussian free field in the following way. So we just add this non-random um, PPS form, uh, pi beta. And then uh, uh, this uh, correlation function uh, can be obtained from compound field theory on the Riemann sphere. Uh, and uh, the correlation, the relation is the following. So we have uh, psi plus and psi minus, then we modified psi, psi plus from this, uh, from one of these double divisors, and we modified pi minus from uh, uh, the other uh, part of uh, double divisors. And then uh, this beta is uh, summation of beta plus and beta minus, but we reflect this beta uh, minus along the boundary of uh, simply going to the way. Okay, so uh, in the uh, simplest code case, uh, we put the background charge A at the starting point of uh, uh, SLE, P, and then uh, we put 2B minus A background charge at Q. Then uh, this uh, pi beta is just uh, additional pi of and uh, 2a times argument w minus 2b argument w prime. So uh, this coefficient comes from this background charge and uh, uh, this coefficient comes from uh, uh, this part. But uh, if you uh, 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 somehow consider the, uh, for example, map, map sending infinity to zero, for example, one over z, then uh, you can see this charge uh, at infinity. In the radial case, uh, we uh, put the same charge at uh, the starting point of SLEs, but uh, for the targeting point, we uh, split uh, this charge into, uh, uh, into the uh, targeting point and uh, uh, its uh, uh, reflection point around the unit circle. Then uh, in that case, the modified Gaussian free field is Gaussian free field minus uh, uh, plus uh, the following uh, PPS form. And this W is a, a, a normalized map from the simplified domain to a, a unit disk sending Q to zero. Okay, then uh, uh, let me explain how you get the height functions. Uh, by inserting a one-leg operator. So, so far, uh, uh, 
uh, I introduced the following pneumologies, which are related to SLA parameters campus. And then I'm going to insert this uh, weak exponential of uh, uh, chiral part of Gaussian free field, which is nothing but the ratio of uh, these OP exponentials and its correlation functions. So then uh, when you insert this one leg operator, then uh, uh, we have the change of background charges in conformal field theory or uh, uh, modified Gaussian free field. So uh, then uh, if you insert uh, this week uh, exponentials with uh, these uh, uh, charges, beta two minus beta one, then uh, you, we have this uh, change of background charges from beta one to beta two. Then, uh, uh, then uh, why do we need this OP exponentials instead of this weak exponential? And then the answer is, uh, uh, is uh, quite uh, 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 easy. And because as, as I mentioned before, this uh, weak exponential does not satisfy uh, Wardus equation or BPG equation. However, this uh, OP exponential satisfies world equation and BPG equations. So somehow the fields in conformal field theory, which uh, uh, satisfies the world equation is this OFI family of Gaussian free field, not the uh, weak, weak family of Gaussian free field. That's why we uh, consider this uh, OFI family of Gaussian free field. Okay, so uh, uh, let me uh, explain uh, very briefly uh, how this insertion changes uh, boundary condition um, boundary conditions. So uh, the beta check is uh, background charge two b at q and r pi is uh, a p minus a q. So then uh, beta is alpha plus uh, alpha plus beta check. So I have a modified Gaussian free field with background charge beta check. And then I insert this uh, weak exponential, which is e to the IA uh, times uh, pi plus P and Q. Then when you compute this correlation, then of course you expand this uh, weak exponential, then uh, you can uh, easily see that only uh, zero term and uh, first term uh, contribute these uh, correlations. So if you have uh, a weak squared, then by the weak calculus, uh, that term just becomes trivial. So we uh, so, uh, uh, zero contraction is just nothing but the correlation function of this. And one contraction, uh, it contributes this correlation, which is a correlation of this Gaussian free field and this exponent. So then uh, uh, we have this formula between Gaussian free field and uh, its chiral part, which is log of, uh, you, you can compute in terms of logarithm of uh, uh, this uh, uh, normalized map from uh, simply connected domain, from simply connected domain D to a paper plane, sending P to in zero and sending Q to infinity. Then you can easily check that this part is just 2a times of argument of w. And then uh, uh, this part, we, uh, it, it, we just define that to be uh, the following PPS IV form. And then that's the uh, correlation function of uh, uh, phi uh, associated to this background charge beta, which is uh, beta check plus alpha. So then uh, 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 we can describe uh, codal SLA kappa rho in terms of background charges. So codal SLA kappa rho is, uh, follows this uh, luminal dynamics and the driving function has the following, uh, uh, satisfies the following stochastic differential equations. And the uh, uh, martingale term is just square root of kappa times uh, dBT. And then uh, drift term is, I'm sorry, this is the typo. And uh, drift term is just, uh, logarithmic derivative of partition function, which is uh, Coulomb's correlation functions in my uh, previous slide. And for the radial part, we can uh, define that uh, in a very similar way, but uh, uh, we can allow the spin at the uh, uh, targeting point, eta. And uh, this, this spin is just nothing but the difference of conformal dimensions at the uh, targeting point 
and which is i eta times uh, a squared, a is square root of two of kappa over two. And uh, this eta uh, appears in the dynamics of this uh, uh, driving function. So uh, in addition to uh, this stochastic part, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Martingale part and uh, uh, this part, we have uh, this uh, determinist part eta times dt. And then uh, uh, this first points just follow the uh, Lubino dynamics at uh, uh, the starting point of this uh, first point. So then uh, uh, this is our uh, 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 main theorem. So we have a beta, uh, background charge beta, which has uh, a specific uh, background charge at the starting point of SLS. A is square root two of kappa, and B is A times uh, kappa four minus one, and B is the, uh, uh, and then this uh, background charge satisfies this uh, uh, neutrality condition. Then uh, uh, the, the collision function of of family of this modified Gaussian free field with this background charge is uh, forms a codal SLE beta matrix of Jobus. For example, uh, uh, this bosonic observable is the Martingale observable for uh, SLE kappa rho. So, because I don't have enough time, I'm going to sketch the proof. But uh, we are going. We use the BP's Cardi equation, which is nothing but the combination of Ward equation and level two degeneracy equation for the wave uh, operator, which is. I'm sorry, so maybe I just have two uh, uh, three uh, three minutes, but uh, let me uh, finish uh, in a, uh, within two or three minutes. So uh, uh, if uh, my uh, conformal field has a strength sensor A, if the following uh, word identity holds, and then uh, uh, this uh, uh, word equation holds, Uh, so the Gaussian free field has this uh, what uh, uh, state sensor A, which is weak, exponent, uh, weak scale of current field. And then uh, uh, Birasra field uh, is uh, defined in the following way. So we take the OP scale of current field and then add this part. Then what the equation says that if you uh, insert this uh, uh, Stress tensor or uh, Birasra field, then uh, uh, it behaves like the uh, take the lead derivative of this specific uh, vector field with uh, uh, singularity at the node of this uh, Birasra field or stress tensor. Okay, then uh, we also uh, uh, extend our theorem to the radial uh, SLE uh, cases. And then uh, uh, in one minute, I'm going to explain what uh, the classical limit of uh, uh, imaginary geometry. And uh, actually, uh, uh, Miller and Sheffield uh, consider this non chiral vertex field, which is nothing but the OP exponential of this modified Gaussian free field. And then, if the difference of these conformal uh, dimensions at z and uh, uh, z star, then if difference is uh, minus one, then it behaves like the uh, 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 vector field. And then the uh, trajectories of these vector fields are uh, conformally invariant object, and which is uh, SL kephas in this case. And when uh, uh, and then also they studied the radial version with the spin, uh, with the flow lines of these uh, uh, OP exponentials. But when you take the kappa tends to zero, then uh, uh, the classical limit SL eta zero uh, can be uh, easily described by the following uh, 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 rational vector field. Then S L is uh, eta zero curve is contained in the real locus of uh, this uh, uh, rational functions, even though uh, it is a multivalued function. 
And it's a flow lines of the following vector field, which is one over derivative of, of these uh, rational functions. But actually, if you take the limit of this vertex field, then you get uh, modulus of uh, R uh, prime over this R prime. Then uh, this picture shows that the real locus of SLE eta zero and the flow lines of this uh, 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 vector field. So then, uh, 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 as I told in the uh, introduction, we just uh, revised this uh, uh, paper and then uh, it appeared uh, at archive yesterday. And uh, in that revised version, we described the classical limit of uh, imaginary geometry for the multiple SLE uh, 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 zero cases. So then, uh, multiple SLE zero are the uh, trajectories of the following uh, ordinary differential equations. Uh, G naught is one of our R prime of G, and R is the uh, real rational functions with uh, prescribed critical point, which are uh, starting points of SLE. Uh, SLD zeros and uh, link pattern alpha. And then the trajectories are geodesics of this uh, flat uh, conformal metric. So here you can see uh, six uh, X SLD uh, growth points here. And then in this case, we have five uh, link patterns, but I just uh, draw the uh, three symmetric cases. So here is the rainbow pattern, and uh, that's the uh, neighborhood pattern, and this is the mix, mixture of rainbow and uh, neighborhood patterns. So, uh, but uh, in these pictures, we have only one circles uh, in the right one. So middle one is the unit circle, and uh, 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 this curve is the uh, hyperbolic geodesics of uh, uh, outside of unit circles, and this one is the hyperbolic geodesics for the uh, inside of a uh, uh, unit circle. And then uh, uh, we also uh, uh, presented uh, the relation between conformal phase theory with normal bounded conditions to uh, uh, backward codal radial SLEs. So uh, I think I need to stop here. <laughs>